The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. The subject we are looking at today is law. For those of you who are here for the first time, in Form 1 and Form 2, this subject is actually known as legislation. From Form 3, 4 and 5, when you'll be facing your exams, it is known as law. So today we are looking at law and I am going to be your law teacher for today. Those involved with this subject are those offering the commercial options, accounts, uh, secretaryship, and all the others. You fall under those offering commercial and you should therefore be attending this class, this subject. Before we go in, to look at the subject, our lesson of today proper, we are going to do a revision of our last lesson. And to permit, so, permit us to do a revision of our last lesson, we are going to actually answer or revise our consolidation exercise or assignment that we had as a take home in our last lesson. The question we had was, which labor organization was created after the First World War in 1919 with the aim of securing basic minimum standards of employment and wages in all sectors of activities throughout member states. The question again, which labor organization was created after the First World War in 1919 with the aim of securing basic minimum standards of employment and wages in all sectors of activities throughout member states? Your answer should have been or should be the International Labor Organization. This is what we looked at in our last lesson. We're looking at international labor institutions, one of which was the International Labor Organization. And we have reminded ourselves on what the International Labor Organization is and its objectives. Our lesson of today is on professional labor institutions. We have looked at the International Labor Organization Today, we are looking at the professional labor institutions that are found within our country, Cameroon. What are those institutions that are there to protect the worker within Cameroon or that are created to protect the worker within Cameroon? Before we go in to look at the lesson proper, the content of our lesson, let's first begin with a plan. What do we plan to do today? We plan to first give our objectives, what we hope to achieve by the end of this lesson. We are going to look at the previous knowledge, what we already know, as learners, as law students, before this lesson. We are going to start with our learning activities, which will begin with the discovery of the lesson and the lesson proper. Then we're going to look at, an, look at some application exercises that will help us to better master our lesson of today. And finally, an assignment or a take home exercise. What do we hope to achieve by the end of this lesson? By the end of this lesson, the learner should be able to list and describe professional institutions that exist in Cameroon. Learners should be able to list and describe professional institutions that exist in Cameroon, and also to be able to state their duties. That is our objective of this lesson. That is the outcome we expect to have by the end of this lesson. What is our previous knowledge? What do we already know? What have we already acquired as knowledge from our previous lessons? First. We are already able to identify international labor organization institutions. We're able to identify international labor institutions, to name them. 
We just mentioned one, International Labour Organization. We had Kratat and many others. You should also be able to know their full meanings, not only their acronyms, not only their abbreviations. You should be able to know their full meanings. You should be able to state their various duties. For our lesson of today, what does it involve? We are going to look at a real life situation, a question that will help us to better understand or to enter smoothly into our lesson of today. What is the main reason for the creation of professional labor institutions? What do you think is the main reason for the creation of professional labor institutions? Why are they created? What is their use? Why are they there, according to you? What do you think? They are there to protect the worker and ensure his well-being. The professional labor institutions in Cameroon are created in order to protect the worker and ensure his well-being, ensure a conducive environment within which he can perform his tasks. We are going to begin with an introduction. We're already moving into our learning activities of today. Institutions found in Cameroon and created with the aim of protecting the worker and securing his welfare. That is what professional labor institutions are for. The professional labor institutions we are looking at today are created or found in Cameroon and have as purpose or aim the protection of the worker and securing his welfare. The first of these institutions that we are going to be examining today is the Labor Inspectorate. What is the Labor Inspectorate? This is a service headed by the Labor Inspector, who is a civil servant appointed by the head of state. Who is a Labor? What is the Labor Inspectorate? What is this institution, the Labor Inspectorate? This institution is a service headed by the labor inspector who is a civil servant appointed by the head of state. What are his duties? What are the duties to be carried out by the labor inspector? First, he is to carry out inspections, controls, and inquiries into establishments, into any company, any establishment that employs workers the labor inspector has as duty to carry out inspections, controls, and inquiries into this establishment. What are they inspecting? What are they controlling? What are they inquiring into? They are making sure that the working conditions available for the workers <coughs> are the best for them, are what is required by the law, that the law, they respect the law in the measures that are being provided to the worker. Another duty the labor inspector has is to manage the manpower and vocational training institutions of a state. They are required to, know, to handle the number of workers and to be able to ensure their welfare and to take care of the institutions that train workers. That is one duty of the labor inspectorate. The labor inspectorate is also in charge of managing, they manage and do a follow up on the social security contributions of workers. They are not the ones who collect these contributions but they are supposed to ensure that these contributions are actually made to the institution which is supposed to receive them. So they have to follow up the establishments, the employers, to ensure that the contributions are made. Normally, these contributions are cut at the source before salary is paid. They are cut from the worker salary. Now, this labor inspectorate ensures that when this salary is cut, when this amount of money is cut, it is actually paid to the institution in charge of social security contributions. They also provide medical facilities to workers. <laughs> the labor inspectorate provides first aid in the event where there's a need for medical facilities which the employer cannot provide. The labor inspectorate provides these facilities for the workers. Second institution found within Cameroon, which is in charge of workers. Second professional labor institution is the trade unions. What is a trade union? It's an organized association of workers formed to protect their interests and improve on their working conditions. Trade union, unions are an organized association of workers formed to protect the interests of registered workers and improve on their working conditions. What are the duties of a trade union? One, they improve on working conditions of members. They improve on the working conditions of members. How? If a, a group of workers are registered to a trade, into a trade union 
and their working conditions are not favorable, it is the place of this trade union to mediate, to intercede with their employer to ensure that those conditions are available. For example, you have workers who may be within an establishment, they do not have toilets. They do not have a canteen where they take breaks, providing them with snacks or food, even if it's paid for by the workers. Those conditions are not favorable for the worker. The trade union would ensure that those conditions are actually met. The trade unions also receive complaints of members and organize strike actions. Trade unions receive complaints from registered members of uh, registered workers and try to intercede or mediate with the employer to come to an agreed solution, peaceful solution. In the event where the negotiation fails, then the trade union can organize a strike action. Another duty of the trade union is that they act as a link between the workers and their employer. The trade union, when, a, when workers are registered to a particular trade union, this trade union acts as a negotiator between the employer and the workers. The workers do not need to go and stand in front of the employer as a group and begin to shout or begin to manifest. They can send somebody from their trade union to meet with the employer and bring before him whatever disagreements they have, whatever complaints they have. And the trade union uh, representative will try to negotiate on behalf of the worker, workers to ensure that whatever outcome is agreed on is something that will benefit the workers. The third institution, the third professional labor institution that exists in Cameroon and which has as aim or purpose the protection of workers is the National Social Insurance Fund. The National Social Insurance Fund, also abbreviated as the NSIF. National Social Insurance Fund. What is the National Social Insurance Fund? This is an institution run by the state and aimed at providing social security for workers of both the private and the public sectors. It is an institution run by the state and aimed at providing social security for workers of both the private and the public sectors. It is an institution created by the, Cameroon, by the state of Cameroon who, who receives contributions from workers from both the private and the public sectors. And these contributions are aimed at, or are kept in order to provide social security. That is in the event where the worker loses his job or goes on retirement, he receives retirement benefits. In the event where the family increases, he receives family allowances. What are the duties of the National Social Insurance Fund? It provides income to workers when they go on retirement, as we already said, they, when they become disabled, they receive disability pension, or at the loss of a breadwinner in the family. If the breadwinner dies, the National Social Insurance Fund will contribute from the money that has been, being, or that has been slashed from the worker's salary throughout his working life. An amount is given back to the family to help the family during the absence, in the absence of the breadwinner. Today, we have looked at the professional institutions that help us. We are looking at professional labor institutions, those institutions that are created in Cameroon to help the worker, to ensure that the worker has or works in a conducive environment. That is what we're looking at today. What are those institutions that we have examined today? First, we have looked at the labor inspectorate. And we have said the Labor Inspectorate is a service headed by the Labor Inspector, who is a civil servant appointed by the head of state. The Labor Inspector is actually a government worker who is appointed by the head of state as a Labor Inspector. And he has or she has several duties. One of such duties is to carry out inspections, controls, and inquiries into establishments. What kind of inspections? They can come into any company, any school, any establishment at any time without previous warning. When they come in, what are they inspecting? They're inspecting to ensure that they are, the workers have good working conditions. If it's an institution that requires them to wear protective gear, like helmets, overalls, and boots, that they have this equipment provided for them. If it is a company, the company is supposed to have security measures, like fire extinguishers available at every corner in the event where a fire breaks out. They are supposed to uh, uh, provide 
facilities for the workers to ensure that they have good working conditions, like what? Toilets, like recreational facilities. They should have an area assigned to them where they have their lunch breaks, either provided by the company or where they can buy lunch separate from their working environment. They can get in to inspect these facilities to ensure that they are available. They get in to control the books of the company to ensure that the workers are not being exploited, but paid according to their categories. They are also there to manage the manpower and vocational training institutions of a state. They are there to manage the number of workers that are within the state. We have on Labor Day, when we have Labor Day on the 1st of May, the Labor Day is organized by the ministry and in accordance with the labor inspectors of the various regions because they know the capacity of the workers under them in each region. So they are able to manage the manpower, know the number, and also to supervise the vocational training institutions, the schools where workers are being trained. The labor inspectors also manage and do a follow-up on the social security contributions of the workers. They all manage to ensure that the establishments actually cut the contributions. They follow up to make sure that these contributions are actually sent to the National Social Insurance Fund. Because in the event where they, there's a social situation that the worker has to benefit from the National Social Security, Social Insurance Fund, it benefits only if the payments have been paid. If the payments have not been paid, then the worker is penalized. He's not able to benefit. So the labor inspector is to ensure that those payments are actually made by their employer. The labor inspector also provides medical facilities to workers. It provides it at a lesser cost. It provides it in the event where the employer may not be able to provide. The second institution we've also examined is a trade union. What are trade unions? They are organized association of workers formed to protect their interests and improve on their working conditions. They are an association of workers formed to protect the interests of workers registered in that association and to improve on their working conditions. For example, we have teachers' uh, association. We have teachers' trade union. We have state registered nurse trade unions. We have medical doctors' trade unions. So trade unions exist according to professions, according to the different professions that exist. And these trade unions are there to ensure that the interest of that particular profession is safe, is regarded. So if we also have the taxi driver's trade union, let's even use that example. When the fare, taxi, when the fare of, uh, when the price of fuel increased and the taxi fare did not increase, you remember what happened? The taxi drivers went on strike, organized by the taxi driver's trade union. Their problem was the cost of fuel has increased, but the cost of the taxi fare has not increased, which means that they are penalizing the drivers. They spend more in their work, but they don't achieve the result, the expected result. So that is what trade unions are there for. They are there to protect the workers. Their duties, they improve on working conditions of the members. They do research. They find out those things that are beneficial to them, those things that will make their job more pleasant or improve on their output, if made available to them. And they ensure that the employers provide these things or make these things available to the workers registered within the trade union. They receive complaints of members and organize strike actions. They receive complaints from those who are registered and they mediate, they mediate, mediate with the employer. They try to reason with the employer to find out. They try to reason with the employer in order to arrive at solutions that will be beneficial for the workers. Everything is to ensure that the workers have good working conditions. In the event that they do not succeed, in bringing out a peaceful solution, then they organize a strike action. As I mentioned earlier with the example of the taxi driver's trade union, when they try to reason to increase the price of um, taxi fare and the state was not for it, they went on strike and then there was, uh, uh, they had to agree. They went on to the table, they discussed, and they tried to, take, tried to come up with an agreement and the price of transport was increased. They also act as a link between registered workers and their employers. They act as a link between registered workers. To benefit from the trade union, you must be a registered member of that trade union. And they act as a link, the trade union acts as a link between the registered workers and their employer. A link 
as in the event where if there's a complaint, a link as in the event where if there's something that can benefit the workers, this trade union brings it to the notice of the employer. Then we have the National Social Insurance Fund, also known in French as CNPS, Caisse Nationale de Provoyance Sociale. In English, it's the National Social Insurance Fund. In French, it's the CNPS. What is this institution? It's an institution run by the state and aimed at providing social security for workers of both the private and the public sectors, meaning both the, the workers of both private and public sectors are registered with the National Insurance Fund. It is not meant only for workers of state workers, as uh, public workers, no. It is not only meant for private workers, those of the private sector, no. All workers are registered under the National Social Insurance Fund and have the right to benefit from this institution. Its main duty is to provide income to workers when they go on retirement, when they become disabled, or at the loss of a breadwinner in their family, as already explained. Now we are going in to look at some exercises, some questions that will help us or determine, help us to find out if we've understood our lesson of today. Question one, state three institutions found in Cameroon with the aim of protecting the worker and his welfare. State any three institutions found in Cameroon with the aim of protecting the worker and his welfare. We've already done that today. Those institutions are the labor inspectorate, trade unions, and the National Social Insurance Fund, or the CNPS. Those are three institutions that are found within Cameroon and has as objective the protection of the worker and his welfare. Question two. Which institution has as main duty the protection of social security of a worker? Which institution has as main duty the protection of the social security of a worker? Which of these three institutions that we have mentioned has as duty, as main duty, to protect the social security of a worker, to ensure that if the worker's family increases, the burden is not felt too much on him because they're going to provide him with an allowance. In the event where he is disabled because of an industrial accident or an occupational disease, his family will not feel the impact of loss of wages because during that period of his disability, something will be given to the family. Which institution is in charge of ensuring or protecting the social security of a worker? It is the National Social Insurance Fund, or the CNPS. That is the institution in charge of protecting the social security of a worker. Question three, state any two duties of the labor inspectorate. Who is the head of the labor inspectorate, as we've already said, the labor inspector? What are two of the duties of the labor inspectorate? We've already mentioned that above. We said one, they carry out inspections controls and inquiries into establishments. They carry out inspections, controls, and inquiries into establishments to ensure that the establishments meet up with what the labor code requires for the well-being of a worker. They also manage the manpower and vocational training of institutions of a state. They also manage the manpower and vocational training institutions of a state. That is their duty. There are several duties we gave. They asked us to mention any two. So any of the two you mentioned, you are still right. That is why we still have, it manages and does a follow-up on the social security contributions of workers. As already explained, it ensures that the employers, after cutting the money from the workers, actually make the contributions to the National Social Insurance <coughs> Fund. They also provide medical facilities to workers. They provide the medical facilities at a reduced cost to the workers whose employers are unable to or who do not have the capacity to actually provide for the workers. Question four, state any one duty of a trade union in the protection of workers. We have said these three institutions are aimed at protecting the worker and his well-being. Now we are being asked to state any one duty of a trade union in the protection of the workers. Any of the duties you give of a trade union are aimed at protecting the worker. So we say, improve on the working conditions of the members. It's there to protect the worker and is a duty of the trade union. Receive complaints of members and organize strike actions. It's a duty of the trade union, which is also aimed at protecting the worker. Act as a link between registered workers and their employers. It is a duty of the trade union and 
is also protecting the worker's interest. Question five. What is, the what is the National Social Insurance Fund? What is the National Social Insurance Fund? What is the CNPS? What is the NSIF? What is the National Social Insurance Fund? It is an institution run by the state and aimed at providing social security for workers of both the private and the public sector. We're simply asked to define the National Social Insurance Fund. So if you are given NSIF, what is the full meaning of the National Social Insurance Fund? And if asked to define it, it is an institution run by the state and aimed at providing social security for workers of both the private and the public sectors. Remember, we have said the National Social Insurance Fund is not only for workers of the public sector, but it's also for workers of the, both the public and the private sector because the workers of these two sectors make contributions to the National Social Insurance Fund and therefore are eligible to benefit from this fund. Question six, which institution provides social security protection for workers of both the private and the public sector? Remember, you're now in form three and you should be aware that you're going to be facing your GC exams in a few years time. And that exam actually is broken down into three parts for the law subject. We have paper one, paper two, and paper three. Paper one is multiple choice question, where you'll be given a question like the one in question six. You are given a question with different options, and you are supposed to choose the most correct option from the answer from the options that have been given to you. Then you have paper two, which is essay. You have paper three, which is case study, real life situations. So this question is just an example of the kind of question you're going to meet in a multiple choice question. So which institution provides social security protection for workers of both the private and the public sector? Is it A, the National Social Insurance Fund, or B, trade unions, or C, labor inspectorate? Which of these institutions provide social security protection for workers of both the private and the public sector? Your answer should be A, the National Social Insurance Fund. Yes, all these three institutions protect work, the worker. They provide protection for the workers. But we are talking here, what kind of protection? Social security protection. The only institution that provides social security protection for workers of both the private and the public sector is the National Social Insurance Fund. Now, if you've been able to answer all the questions that we've gone through successfully, then it means you've understood our lesson of today. But if you have any worries, if at any point in time, any of those questions were difficult for you to produce an answer to, then you need to go back to our lesson. You need to begin the lesson of today again. Go through it attentively. And by the end of the, of the, of the lesson, you'll be able to answer all the questions we have gone through as uh, uh, application exercises. That shows that we have achieved our objective of today. Our objective being to look at the institutions that are found within Cameroon, aimed at protecting the worker and to be able to state their duties. That is what we have done today. And if you go through the, the application exercises and you're able to answer them, it means we have achieved our objective of today. Before we go home, let us take an exercise, a question that will help us to revise our lesson of today. And in our next lesson, it is going to help us to as a throwback to our lesson of today. Make sure you do this exercise at home. It helps you to prepare for the next lesson. It helps you to revise the previous lesson that we've done today. What is the question? Which of these institutions created for the protection of a worker is responsible for organizing strike actions in Cameroon? Again, which of these institutions created for the protection of a worker is responsible for organizing strike actions in Cameroon. Which, which institutions? We have seen the Labor Inspectorate, we have seen the National Social Insurance Fund, and we have seen the trade unions. Which of these three institutions created for the protection of the worker is responsible for organizing strike actions in Cameroon in the event where negotiation between the employer and the workers has failed? Which is that institution? That answer will be for our next lesson. So in preparation for our next lesson, our next lesson will be on historical evolution of labor legislation in Cameroon. 
Our next lesson for this class will be on historical evolution of labor legislation in Cameroon. Tam tam a tonge, tam zabike, tam 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 a mote, tam zabike, mane tam bia ninyane, injo bia yen.